Hello everyone, it's me again, Tim Bradley, and it's time for another interview with, with Sarah Sutton. Hello Sarah. Hello Tim. It's nice to see you again and, and chat to you. you again. Yes. yes, and we're in Exeter. Yes, uh, we're, in, we're at the West Point Arena in Exeter. Yep. Um, so yeah, how, how are you enjoying Exeter? Are you... It's a very nice part of the world. I've got friends who live near here, so that's Yes, I think nice. you mentioned that in one yeah. of my interviews last time. You've got yes. friends in Exeter. Yep. So, yeah. so we've stayed with them last night. And yes. uh, so it's been, yeah, it's been very nice. It's a very pretty part of the world. Yes, this is the first time I've been to Exeter. Oh, and really? I, yeah, nice. Yes, and I've had a, I mean, I've had a little walk around this area and it was, uh -huh. it's, there's, there's so much green in it this is area. It's very pretty. Yeah, compared to other convention venues yeah. we've been to because exactly. it's, yeah, it's more city bound, but this, exactly. is, this is more on the outskirts. So it yeah, good. yeah, and you're here for the two days, aren't you? I am. Yes. yes. Last time we chatted an interview, we chatted about your first acting job, which was Baby Roo, mm -hmm. um, where you played, um, which you played Baby Roo in Winnie the Pooh. I did. Yes, on stage. So let's talk about one of your celebrated roles on TV, which which you did before playing this, so Dog 2, playing Diana Purwell in The Moon Stallion. Oh, yes, fond memories. Yes, and I've got some fond memories here oh, for yeah, you. Some so photographs. So, some photographs oh. of you. So, you know, I mean, if you want to have a little look through those, yes. uh, just, you know, see, see how how it is to see how very much you've done nice. you know in in, in yeah. that production you know because it, it it's a very well put together production the moon it, it was lovely and it was lovely to do and yes. it was the first job because i was 16 so it's the first job i did where i didn't have to have a chaperone oh yes right i was very grown up <laughs> yes yes you didn't have to <laughs> anyone to look after you no, yes. exactly. it was it in Berkshire and Wiltshire when yes. you filmed the drama. Yep. Uffington. Yes, that's White right. Horse at Uffington. Yes, because um, the Upperton White Horse Hill that features in the production, it's actually a real thing, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I mean, I, I, I need to see it for myself, but I, I'm pretty sure that it is a real thing, isn't yeah, it? No, no, it is. It's beautiful. The views from up there are amazing, so yeah. it's worth a trip. Yeah, it looks really nice mm. there, doesn't it? Uh, the Moon Stallion, it was originally a six-part serial by Brian Hales. Mm. Um, Brian Hales, now, he worked on Doctor Who. He did, and, and, yeah. and, and is well known for creating the toy maker and the ice warriors. Uh, were you aware at the time that the Moon Stallion was written by a Doctor Who writer? No. no. <laughs> and Doctor Who what didn't didn't really feature on my radar at that point, so I had no idea. But sadly, he died uh, yes. in the October, and I yes, think Moon Stallion went out some November December time. So. He died before it was actually broadcast, which mm. is a real shame. Well, I know he did four Doctor Who stories before he did The Moon Stallion, mm. and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, but it, it just, it, it's a very nicely well-written drama, because mm. it, it feels like it's part of, it, 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 it's almost like it's based on a children's book, but... Uh, well, but yes, I mean, I didn't really understand the end, <laughs> all the, some, some bits of it, but um, yeah, it was part of that genre of thing that BBC did for classic children's drama. Um, it, it, you all thought of it as being a Sunday evening thing, but it wasn't. It went out on a Wednesday, I believe. Yeah. Um, so it does have that, that definite feel, but it was. I think that's something that's missing now in for television today, for a yeah, sort of I, younger audience that everyone can sit and watch. I mean, Doctor Who used to be that one of those yes, sort yes. of productions. Yes, yes, there's a sort of educational value mm. in, in the Moose Daniel, yeah, I think, you know, exactly. especially in, in terms of history. That legends and history and... Yeah. and you know, it's a period piece, so yeah. The character that you played in the Moon Stallion, mm -hmm. Diana, it's quite an unusual role for you because you were playing a blind girl. Yes. Um, was that a challenge for you to play? Yeah, it's always um, a challenge to, ch challenge to do anything that um, involves a disability, I suppose. But um, yeah, I remember my eyes got, I uh, used to get a lot of ache, eye ache, because you don't move your eyes around quite so, so much. So you, you had to sort of like look ahead without you, any distractions. Yeah, if like something distracted you out of vision, you, you know, most people turn and look at it, but if you can't see it, then there's no reason for you to turn. Yeah, so, but you got some help with that, didn't you? Yeah, so yeah. I met um, a, a blind lady. In fact, she had not been born blind. She had gone blind at a oh. very early age. Um, so I met her a couple of times and just really looked at what she was doing and the way she moved her yeah. head. And things. was it was your performance well received at the time? I mean, I mean, because did you get any feedback I, I on her? No, I didn't really get any feedback. I don't know. Because I'm kind of wondering, would that be sort of looked on favourably? Yes, you know? exactly. I don't know whether I mean nowadays you'd probably have to actually be blind, <laughs> a mm. blind person. I think. I don't know. Um, yeah. I, I've no idea really. The, the Moon Stallion was directed by Dorothea Brooking. Yes. Uh, now she was a Tele children's television producer and director mm -hmm. at the time. I mean, what was she like to work with? Well, she was great. I mean, she, she'd been around quite a long time and she knew exactly what she was doing. So she, you know, she was very strong. And uh, as I say, she, she knew what she wanted 
and there was no messing about or no ambiguity, no hmm. ambiguity. It was sort of she was great to work. I've with. noticed that it was all on film. The production, yes, you I know. mean how classic and magic is that? Yeah, because um, you know usually when you do a product, TV production like that in those days, it was a cut, cut between yeah. film and videotape. Yeah. But it was all on like, film. All on location. It was fantastic. So we had all summer filming down in <laughs> in Wiltshire. It was lovely. We stayed in a hotel for a long time, and then some of the makeup girls got um, um, rented a cottage because we were down there for so long. Didn't wow. really want to live in a hotel. So, yeah, we we went. The whole roofers rented this place down there. It was really lovely. It sounds nice, yeah, doesn't it? It was, yeah. it was great. You were joined by a very talented cast. Uh, yes, in the, there was James. Fabulous. There was James Green, David Pullen, and John Abernery. Um, yeah. yeah, Caroline Goodall yeah. and Joy Harriton. And of course, you worked with David, David Haig. Haig. Yeah, David Haig, who's a big star. <laughs> um, he, that was his first television. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it was a big learning curve for him, but you know, he yeah. could see. Was, what was, was he really like good. to work with? He was lovely. It was great. You could see, you know, he was sort of how good he was going to be and how, how the opportunities for him after that would open up. Did so. you know that he was in the same season of Dog 2 that you were in when you started uh, being was Nissa? He? Yes. Oh, well, you see, you wouldn't know that because he was in the first story of that season. Oh, you see, because okay. He was in The Leisure High, which was the oh, first story of Tom Baker's really? last season. Yes, oh, and, and then yeah. you came in uh, in the last two stories. Mm. Yes, but uh, it's it's a shame, really, because you didn't, you're passing oh, no, cross exactly, on that. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that would have been really nice. I've not seen him since, so it would have been nice. Well, he has done quite a lot of things over yeah, the years. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I saw him... Would, I saw him in the Downton Abbey movie um, right. years ago, and uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed him in that. Yeah, he was yeah, good. No, yeah, he's done sort of Hollywood type things, yeah. isn't he? And of course, let's not forget the main star of the show, uh, who is oh, the, the moon, the, the moon stallion, <laughs> played by a horse named Taboo. Taboo. Yes. Um, I've actually been in touch with the owner of that horse. Have you? Yeah, Richard Viner. Yeah, he 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 commented on my moon standing reviews and uh, uh, on my blog, okay. and uh, he he shared how much he how, how his fond memories of you know owning the horse and having the horse appear yeah, in the moon stallion. Yeah, he was stallion. a circus horse, wasn't he? Or uh, well, I, I'm not sure. I, I suppose he was. I, yeah. I don't. I mean, but uh, but he was very. It was it was just such a nice surprise he to hear from him. He was a beautiful, beautiful horse, but. Quite a spirited horse, that's what I would say. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yes. Well, what was it like? Right, did you get to ride him? I did a bit, but um, not much. I mean, all the, the long shots of the galloping with him was done by a double. Yes, I thought that was the case. Because, because we because had no, no saddle, no bridle. Because I, I would, I would have been him. impressed if you yeah, were actually no. a, sp a good rider. On um, You'd have to be a really good rider not to, you know, to be able to do that. Yeah. It, it is a shame that the BBC hasn't officially released the Moon yeah. Yeah, on DVD it, in I the think UK. it's a shame. I think they've they've missed something there. It's you, really difficult to get hold of. Yeah, because I I was able to get hold of it um, on DVD from Germany yeah. of all places. The Munchlegel or something. Yes, it's called, isn't it? that's right. Yes, I I, I don't speak German, no, so I can't no, pronounce it. But but um, yeah, it, it's funny that they never released it officially no, because uh, I don't understand that because I'd have thought it would have been quite a good thing to the, have released. There was one time it was released on a, on, a, on an application called BBC Store. Um, right. I mean, I don't know if you know. No. Where it was released in 2015, and and then it came. The Mustang came on BBC Store in 2016, but then, that annoyingly, BBC Store closed in 2017. Oh. Which, which uh, you know, because I had it for a while, right. and then I lost it. It you know. just disappeared. It just disappeared. Yes. Yeah, so uh, oh, yeah. So, well, no, so, it's a shame. I think they should have done that. Yeah. So it's a shame. I mean, but do you? So you have? Do you have any idea if the Mustang might be released uh, I, on home media? I have no idea. I wouldn't have thought they don't, they, so. They don't I think it's probably too old-fashioned now. No. I, 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 I think it's filmed in a different way. I mean, even the early Doctor Who's, you know, it's just, take today's television is completely different now. Mm. It's a different way of I'm very pleased. Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah, well, I mean, the TV's not what it used to be, uh, no. I suppose. No. I, I'm very pleased that you recorded the Moon Stallion audiobook oh. for Phantom oh. Films, which was released in 2019 before co COVID. Yeah, yes, finally. Before <laughs> COVID 19 happened in 2020. Um, right. I mean, was that a challenge for you to yes. record five discs worth of audio from yeah, reading I know, I know actors who, who do that sort of stuff all the time, and I take my hats off to them because it's very, very hard. Yeah, and I was absolutely exhausted, and all the different voices and stuff. Some people are really good at that. I'm well, not. I thought you were very good well, redoing the new audiobook. I mean, I mean, I, I listen to it every year. Do so, you? I mean, that's how that goes to show how crazy <laughs> I am. But I do, enjoy, I did enjoy the Moon Study in the audiobook, oh, and you yeah, were very good. Okay, I haven't listened to it as much. Well, you were very no surprise. Well, you were very good oh, in thank it. You yes. very much. Do you want to hear a joke yes. before we finish? Yes, yeah, please. Uh, there's a it's a horse joke for today. Okay, that's, yeah. a, that's very apt. Yes, very apt. What did the horse say when it fell? 
Well, no, not nay. <laughs> no, not nay. No, it, no. The horse said, "I've fallen and I can't giddy up." <laughs> yeah, that's not one of your best. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much, Sarah. Yeah, yeah, this is on record. This is not my yeah, best joke. No, no, no. Well, our next time, better one. Oh, I thought it was a good one, but okay. <laughs> if, 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 I, I, I've been judged by Sarah. It's not one of my best. <laughs> well, thank you very much for chatting to me, You're Sarah. Welcome, uh, and Tim, it's been great you. seeing you today. And uh, I'll see you at uh, well, I'll see you tomorrow and then at another convention. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, we'll yeah, meet up again. Yes, thank you, thank everyone, you. for listening. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.